All right, let me show y'all what you're gonna need to make these uh, these jugs. Obviously, a milk jug, some bank line, and this is a number eight uh, carbon steel uh, circle hook. I normally use the sixes, like I said, the salt water ones, but I couldn't find them at Walmart. So yeah, and don't be swatting at gnats when you have a hook in your hand. It's just not good practice. So, some of this off of here. I know some people are going to be like, yeah, we know how to tie a knot. That's good. Back to this convenient handle. Use whatever knot you want, whatever you think will secure this. I'm using old square knots or granny knots right now on this part. Give it a little tug there. And I'll show you what I use to secure the hook. Double this line up. Place it through that oversized eye. See, through the eye. Take the loop down over the hook, pull it back up the shank, do one wrap, pull it through, do another wrap, pull it through one more time. And I hear a logging truck coming. That's what it should look like. So we'll go set this. All right, here's our pre-made jug. There's our pond. So that will float around out there until a turtle takes notice. Uh, fish will, they'll have a go at that gizzard, but uh, they usually can't get it off the hook. It usually takes a snapper, so. And uh, then you got to hope that, uh, you know, with the big pond, I don't, uh, I don't throw them in a big pond unless I can actually wait out there and get it if I have to. But the turtle usually bring it into the bank, so you can just walk and get it. So. We'll see how this goes. I haven't actually tried jugging in a while. Be interesting. Stay tuned. All right, here's the jug ready to go. Got our tarred bank line tied off to the handle of the milk jug. Got a number eight hook. Uh, it's a catfish hook. It's a circle hook. I prefer number six uh, saltwater hooks, but Walmart was out, so that's what we're using. And we're going to throw it into that pretty pond right there. So uh, we'll see what happens, huh? This is a bush hook, and this one's from last year. Aptly named because, surprise, surprise, it's tied to a bush or a small sapling. So sometimes I'll reuse these. Again, I think that's a saltwater hook. It's shown much rust considering how long it's been out here. I always double check to make sure your line's still good. And uh, put a gizzard on that. Throw it out in there. And so, we got this one set. I didn't be able to see the gizzard down in there. Let's go throw this other bush hook out. <clears throat> yep, uh, my family has been, uh, check out the kingfish.
Ah. Anyway, it's a belted kingfisher. You can hear it. Anyway, my family's been catching turtles out of this pond for oh, close to 50 years. Uh, my family's actually the ones that put fish in here back in the 70s. So there's our bait. There's our pond. Tied off to that little maple there. I use gizzards because they're a little tougher for the turtle to get off the hook without getting caught. So we'll come back and check these when it gets close to dark. See if we did any good. Stay tuned. Alright, here's one I got. Um, I know it looks lifeless, but it's still alive. Was submerged for a bit on the jug using a gizzard and a number eight circle hook. And the reason why I didn't film me pulling it out because I had to go over in there and it was tangled up. So and I uh, got a little wet, not too bad though, considering. So there's one. See if we did any good with those. That's that's a keeper. Yeah, you can hear that thing breathing. Not want to move my foot. Check out this timber rattler. Um, it's three feet. I really don't want to get too close, obviously. Woo, there it goes. Get that thing. It's one of the largest venomous snakes in the state of Kentucky. Okay, I'm checking turtle lines. i got to get on my way. See that copperhead? I almost stepped on that thing. They blend in, boy, do they. Got one here. Probably see it under the water. Can't tell how big it is. Um, it's a keeper. All right, I gotta get a bag and put that one in. Also, gotta go check another line over here. Kind of leery of the snakes. I've been, well, I've seen the rattlesnake there, and then of course the copperhead filmed both of those. <clears throat> Rather not step on one. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure this hook has nothing on it. And I would be correct. Alright, well, we got one. Yeah, there this one is. I'm not going to keep that one. Not big enough. I'm going to let it go. Well, that was big. Must have been the big carp in here. Them waves. Anyway, I want to release this one. There it goes. Uh, 
Well, here's another little guy that's going to have to be let go. But uh, that's all right. I would put my foot there, but that was going to happen. <laughs> so I'll turn this one loose, and uh, that was it for this weekend. Uh, I'll probably try it again for uh, cold weather, see if it do any good. But, uh, yeah, caught a couple anyway. Of the old lagoon. Let's set this little guy loose. Go on. Well, you know what? I'm just going to let this one make up its own mind what it wants to do. I'm not going to force it. It's really need to get in the water. It's getting dark. It's a lot safer in there than uh, out here. So. Does not like to be pushed. No, no, don't turn on me. Look, I'm going to go. Water on your own, not that far away.